What's going on today? <clears throat> Fix my microphone here. Welcome to Blockchain Tech and Finance News. If you're on the YouTube side, please do subscribe, turn on the bell notifications. Probably going to be. I think I want to replace that header with just uh, this one from now on. Blockchain Tech and Finance News. Why is my seat so low today? Do this here. I can sit, fit. I should just stand for the news. Why do I feel shorter today? What's going on here? What's going on with the camera here? Every day, just the camera. All right, that's a thousand times better. There we go. Now I'm in the show. <clears throat> Can I keep this one? All right, here we go. Now, welcome to Blockchain Tech and Finance News. If you're on YouTube side, please do subscribe, turn on the bell notifications to this show each and every day. We have this Blockchain Tech and Finance News. Smash the subscribe button again. We're live weekdays, 7.30 a.m. EDT. I'll start reading the news. And it's about uh, 7, yeah, 7.15, quarter past 7 a.m. EDT time. And Saturday, we have these 11.30 a.m. EDT time. This past Saturday, I didn't do stream. Not like anyone watches these anyways right now. But I do the news and I read it. So, between now and when I share the stream out, I'm just kind of hanging out here chatting. You can leave your comments in the chat. So, I'm going to clean these. You can leave your comments in the chat or on the recap videos on the YouTube side. All right, well, I clean the old spectacles off. That's better. Now I can see. All right, so yeah. Also, if you like, into, if you're into NFTs, you can search Kinzar on the OpenSea and Foundation. You can follow me on TikTok, Kintoshi GG. Follow me on Instagram, Kintoshi GG. And follow me on Twitch, Kintoshi GG, for extra social content on there like that. And again, I can see you in the chats. So leave your chats, leave your comments in there. And if it's cool and good enough, you're always good enough, I'll put you up on <clears throat> this way. So if you'll see, this chat will open up. And you can see your chats there. So ask a question. If you got questions on news, if you got something that you think is important to cover in today's segments or in future ones, don't be shy. Carl the Woodwork. So again, I'm going to uh, retweet this room out. So if you're on the Twitter side, go ahead and give a retweet also. <clears throat> All right. So, blockchain tech and finance news live. All right, so that's up there. probably just give a retweet out <clears throat> if y'all want to um retweet the worm, worm out share the link or watch on the youtube side i'm also streaming this on twitch i'm just chatting as well let's see it is you know, 10 minutes so i think i might just go ahead and start reading the news here so um, i'll leave about little room for comments questions if nothing's there i'm just gonna go right on into it start reading the news what was i gonna do oh, i'm gonna open up the twitter stream um <clears throat> so 
bunch of retweets. Delete that. Uh, I guess I'll leave that open. Sure, why not? All right, mic's working, everything's working, let's go. So also, I will make note of this real quick. I will be kind of uh, moving forward here. I'll be back this afternoon. And essentially what we'll be doing moving forward here is, um, I will be doing these streams in the morning, all right? 7 a.m. EDT time. Right now, I'm going to start the news here right after I, I state this about what's going on here. All right. Um, take a sip. So, each and every day, 7 a.m. between 7 and 7.30 a.m., I'll start reading the news here. At 10 a.m. on Mondays, you can join Gold Ape Gang and my personal account for Sunrise Radio. That'll go on today for about a half hour. <clears throat> but typically go on for longer based on uh, scheduling. If I can leave it, actually, if I can leave it on host today, it will stay on host while I have to um, do IRL for a brief moment. After that, uh, again, so on Mondays, there'll be 10 a.m. It'll go ongoing for Sunrise Radio. And in the afternoons, I'll be basically starting streams. Uh, Twitch streams, it'll be streaming on pretty much just, yeah, just Twitch and, and Twitter. So the Twitch and Twitter streams <clears throat> will be uh, art creation on just chatting on Twitch. It will also be gaming days. So game days, again, I'm going, I'm going back into just kind of streaming uh, Warzone, PUBG Mobile, uh, gaming walkthroughs. I need. I would like to go through Cyberpunk, but my core focus is producing art on, on Twitch, <clears throat> on just chatting, and then having some afternoon gameplay a little bit each day, and, and just kind of go from there. Um, I'm debating whether to stream on start streaming on Facebook again once more, because um, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll maybe I'll explore it, but. Let's see. I think with that, let's go ahead and go right on into the news. I'm gonna start out with the market conditions today. And I like to keep this little overlay on because what I'm actually gonna be doing is I will through on Twitch um, just chatting and stuff like that. On some days, I'll just be doing Twitch just chatting where I will be doing coding work, <clears throat> building applications, building websites, building or just doing maybe a specific topic in my education and what I'm going to be moving forward with. Uh, so that'll be on here on here eventually and it'll only be on uh, Twitch and I'll be streaming on Twitch, YouTube and yeah, so I'll be on Twitch, Twitter and YouTube just like this. Uh, for coding kin, but I'll have always have this overlay up here in this little box, and then my gaming streams and art production streams. Well, I'll be like on the other side of the screen, all the way over on the other side of this lower half dashboard of our screen here, uh, playing games and making art. <clears throat> so let's start with the market watch. All right, we're gonna go into the U.S. markets and make our rounds. All right, let's go. In the U.S., we got the Dow down 1.62%. The S&P 500 down 1.72%. The NASDAQ down 1.8%. The Global Dow down 1.18%. Gold down 0.57%. And oil down 1.1% in the Euro markets. In Europe, FTSE 100 is down 0.76%. The DAX is down 0.21%. The CAC 40 is down 0.27%. The FTSE MIB is up 0.46%. The IBEX 35 is down 0.77%. The stocks 500 or 600 is down 0.71%. In the Asian markets, 
We get the Asia Dow down 2.51%. The Nikkei, Nikkei. Let me pronounce this. How to pronounce Nikkei? How to pronounce Nikkei? Let's see that. Nikkei index. I'm going to read what it says. Maybe it'll... Nikkei. The Nikkei index. All right. Nikkei 225 is down 2.66%. The Hang Seng down 0.44%. The Shanghai down 1.2%. The Sensex down 1.64%. And Singapore down 1.4%. In the Forex, we got the Euro down 0.7%. The Yen up 0.66%. The Pound down 0.83%. The Australia Dollar down 0.64%. The DXY index up 0.52%. The WSJIDX is up 0.65% on the rates markets. We got the US 10 year up 0.097, German 10 year up 0.0718, Italia, yeah, Italia, sorry, Italy 10 year up 0.146, Spain 10 year up 0.131, the UK 10 year up 0.317, and Japan 10 year up 0.0082. On the futures market, we got the DGIAF down 0.67%, the SP F down 0.73%, the NASDAQ F down 0.65%, gold down 0.56%, silver down 1.53%, and crude oil down 0.88%. In the crypto markets, we have Bitcoin up 0.17% at 18,919, Ethereum up 0.42% at 1,298 and 49 cents, XRP USD, uh, XRP with the USD is uh, 0.45% down 0.7 uh, down 7.95 percent <clears throat> what's going on there bitcoin cash up 0.12 percent uh litecoin and monero i'm not you know i'm probably not going to start keep reading um bitcoin cash lightning coin and monero monero i'm probably just maybe not even xrp i probably will just focus on bitcoin and ethereum uh if anything like i'd like to see cardano up here because cardano's making steps and strides as well as is tezos with their smart contracts Maybe I guess even Solana, but I mean, I get, I get it. They're putting like the top cryptos up here. So, all right. The first piece of news I have here today, we're going to start with blockchain tech. We're going to start with, uh, yeah, blockchain news. Then we're going to go on to some cryptocurrency news. We're going to go on to NFT news. We'll go on to technology news and we'll go on to finance and stock market news. So this is from uh, bitcoin.com writer Sergio. WEF launches Crypto Sustainability Coalition to leverage Web3 technologies in climate change battle. So the World Economic Forum, WEF, has launched the Crypto Sustainability Coalition, an initiative dedicated to assuring us dedicated to assessing the role of web3 technologies in the fight against climate change the organization which is composed of 30 companies educate educative groups educative groups and other institutes institutions will research the impact of the energy consumption of these technologies and how they can be used to aid the current decarbonization efforts wef is to use web3 to fight climate change and this topic here web3 is a term that groups cryptocurrency and blockchain technologies is currently in the spotlight of group energy groups that seek to determine if though if the use of these technologies pernicious for the environment the world economic forum wef has decided to take these technologies into account launching an initiative to investigate if they can be useful in the current fight against climate change the initiative which was allowed, announced on september 21st is called the crypto sustainability coalition and it is composed of 30 different companies educated educative organizations and other institutions interested in the issue among these are known cryptocurrency link projects like Solana, Avalanche, Circle, Near Foundation, Ripple, and the Stellar Development Foundation, among others. This coalition, as part of the Crypto Impact and Sustainability Accelerator, another bigger initiative launched this same year, will inquire about the different ways in which these companies can organize to help its in this endeavor. Uh, <clears throat> Brinley head of blockchain digital assets of the World Economic Forum stated, an important and unique aspect of Web3 is that it uses technology to support and reward direct community engagement and action. This means we can coordinate the uh, work of many individuals directly with one another, enabling collective action without centralized control. Different uh, studies areas, uh, different study areas and criticism. 
with this uh, this new initiative has already created different work groups to investigate three key subjects related to crypto blockchain and other usage one of these uh, one of these points has to do with the energy usage of these technologies and how these can impact the climate and nature in the future another these another of these key points has to do with the has to uh, has to do with how these web3 technologies can change and be leveraged in order to decarbonize current activities these applications might include mining and other decentralized activities the third the third subject has to do with standardizing and putting carbon credits in the blockchain, making the issuance and management of these instruments more transparent and trustable and opening the doors for more people to participate in these markets. So what do you think about Crypto Sustainability Coalition not recently about the WEF? Let them know in the comments below. You can check these article links on all of these, on the recap videos on YouTube, if you'd like to uh, search more and do your own due diligence and just read through at your own leisure. So if you're on YouTube side, definitely subscribe, turn on the bell notifications over there. To youtube.com forward slash Kentoshi. GG. Those ring calling up? No. Okay. Next piece of article we have coming up here is from Coindesk. So, bank business side. The, um, this is for cryptocurrency. So, the first one was just blockchain and Web3 in general. We're going to go dive into a little deeper and, and core specific with cryptocurrency and then NFTs. So this is, again, this is in the business sector of Coindesk. Bank of America says currencies continue to act as risk assets. This is from writer Will Canny. Canny. Ether continues to slide as investors shift to wait and see to a wait and see approach regarding future upgrades, the bank said in a research report. Digital assets continue to act as risk assets, falling as global interest rates rise. Bank of America BAC Seoul said in a research report Friday, still positive signs of an eventual recovery include stable coin inflows. Stable coins are a type of cryptocurrency whose value is pegged to another asset, such as the US dollar or gold. Last week, these inflows jumped to 490 million, 58% higher than the previous week, the report said, as a real world use case like payments, remittance. Payments slash remittances are adopted in real-world data providers like decentralized Oracle networks increase functionality. The four largest stablecoins witnessed exchange net inflows for the third week in a row, the report said, not noting that large Binance USD, uh, BUSD inflows slash USD coin USDC outflows could be the result of investors preemptively rotating into BUSD from USDC to avoid disruptions following Binance's decision to auto convert some stable coins into its own stable coin. Bank of America <clears throat> expects regulatory clarity to support decentralized finance adoption. DeFi is an umbrella term used for lending, trading, and other financial activities carried out on a blockchain without the use of a traditional without the use of traditional intermediaries. The jump in Ether's ETH price from mid-July to mid-August continues to reverse as investors digest that Ethereum's blockchain switched to proof of stake. POS does not fit scalability concerns or high fees, and these investors shift to a wait-and-see approach regarding future upgrades, the note said. The transition from uh, proof-of-work to a more environmentally friendly proof-of-stake consensus mechanism is just of five upgrades for the Ethereum blockchain a process that was called the merge. And the next uh, upgrade is coming here very soon, which is going to uh, allow that the transactions are seamlessly, um, like, uh, significantly a lot cheaper and faster, but... And I read through that in the other article, uh, news reading the other day. All right. So that's that there. Let's go into this next article I found interesting and I found up on going on here. So uh, this is from Cointelegraph. Tesla overpriced Apple App Store wants 30% cut on NFT sales. So again, this is from Jesse. This is from Cointelegraph. Uh, this is writer Jesse. While the commission is standard for Apple, some have expressed their displeasure at the company's grotesquely overpriced cut of sales. You can also listen to this article on the audio side on the recaps on YouTube. I have all the links there, like I said. Non-fungible token NFT application developers and others have ba uh, balked, balked at a decision by tech giant to impose a 30% commission on NFTs sold through apps on its marketplace, effectively putting NFT purchases in the same boat as a regular in-app purchase. According to, uh, um, <clears throat> how are they going to do that? It's interesting. According to a Friday report from the information, the smartphone company is now allowing NFTs to be bought and sold through apps listed on its marketplace. Huh. All right. But 
imposes its standard commission on in-app purchases of 30%, similar to that imposed by Andrew's app, Google, uh, app Store Google Play. The commission rate has, however, been slammed by some for being grotesquely overpriced, partic- particularly when compared to standard NFT marketplace commissions, which are around 2.5%. Tech blogger Florian Mueller called Apple's app tax on NFT sales abusive, but consistent while epic game ceo T- uh, tim sweeney tweeted that apple is crushing another nascent technology that could rival its grotesquely overpriced in-app payment service so this is uh, from tim <coughs> tim sweeney there tweet uh, now apple's killing all nft app businesses they can't tax crushing another nascent technology that could rival its grotesquely overpriced in-app payment service apple must be stopped so i want to see um let's see the report noted that popular Solana NFT marketplace Magic Eden withdrew its service from the App Store after learning of the policy, even after Apple offered its low offered to lower its commission to 15%, though the app continues to be listed on the App Store at the time of writing. I mean, come on, all right, they're lowering it to 15%. We got to start somewhere, right? I know a lot of a lot of places in the legalization of cannabis and, and the uh, licensed medical and recreational, they are uh, imposed by state governments for 20 percent so they gotta start somewhere otherwise they'll never make it anywhere because they never even tried to start from the beginning because they're just like ah, tax you know you have to start and just start doing business start getting revenue and and um and work with the system after there thereafter um about lowering those things meanwhile other nft marketplaces on the app store have reportedly limited functionality due to heavy commissions there also there's also added challenge for being forced to conduct transactions in the united states dollar in the united states dollars rather than cryptocurrency which could prove risky given the volatility of cryptocurrency markets and related throw your board apes in the trash <laughs> throw your board apes in the trash is that about the rider rips <laughs> by car- from carrying a medical data to streamlining royalty payments nfts serve a variety of important technology purses board apes are demeaning or demeaning distraction. Hmm. All right. Well, I don't agree with that because it's art. So distract yourself with art, distract yourself with utility in NFTs, distract yourself with gaming in NFTs, whatever it is. Um, it's, I don't, yeah. So don't throw your bored apes in the trash. Others have seen the positive because there's an artist behind. There's an artist behind that, you know. An artist created the artwork, so it's just at least take it with that. Others have seen the positive side of Apple's NFT acceptance. Gabriel Layden, CEO of Web3 game developer Limit Break, said the move could put an ETH wallet in every single mobile game onboarding one pl- one billion plus players, adding he would happily give Apple a 30% cut of a free NFT. <laughs> I like that. I like his saying there. Happily give Apple a 30% cut of a free NFT. <laughs> Cause, cause it's free. So what's the, what's the 30% cut going to be? <laughs> it's not the first time companies have battled with Apple regarding its commissions. Epic games has filed legal proceedings after its flagship game. Fortnite was delisted from the app store in August, 2020 after the publisher attempted to sell in game purchases, which skirted Apple's fees, NFT marketplace apps, on the app store currently include OpenSea, Rarible, Magic Eden, and marketplaces in crypto trading apps, including Binance, Crypto.com, and Coinbase Wallet. So that's that. Grotesquely overpriced Apple's app store wants 30% cut on NFT sales. They didn't say anything on um, maybe like crypto trading through uh, their apps on like Binance and stuff. So I don't know if implementations there. I was going to tech news for the day. And if you have comments if you're watching this stream uh, throw your comments in the stream if it's noteworthy i'll show it right up here on the stream and answer your questions or just feature it here so we got some tech news here over from the indian express it's from a writer we got a writer here eh, it's just by science desk all right nasa dart mission watch live stream of spacecraft to an asteroid here's how you can watch nasa's dart spacecraft crash into the dimorphos by dimorphos asteroid and what is the first test of a planetary defense mechanism that's what that was my thought when i first saw this article i was like oh well, they want to crash our asteroid on there okay blow that up or divert it um, onto near earth impacts like that is that what's going on here wow is it gonna is it trying to load a live stream <clears throat> that's just NASA, 
double asteroid redirection test spacecraft is scheduled to have its plan with the asteroid Dimorphos at approximately 7.14 EDT on September 20th. This today, or 4.40 a.m., it will be the first mission that <clears throat> will be the first Good Lord. DAR will be the first mission to test a method that could potentially be used to redirect asteroids that pose a threat to our planet. Here's how you can watch the Space Agency's live stream on the event. You can watch it right here. NASA is an event on NASA TV, the Space Agency's app, and its YouTube channel. You can also watch the crash in the window above. The agency will be again live streaming from the spacecraft at 6 p.m. EDT today or at 3.30 a.m. IST on September 27th. So NASA's launch services program, they got a, a tweet here. Yeah, follow NASA on uh, Twitter. We got some cool stuff there. Dimorphos is a 160 meter wide asteroid that orbits the much larger Didymos, Didymos, which is, Didy, Didy, I don't know, which is about 700, 780 meters wide. When DART crashed, crashes into Dimorphos, it will suddenly Subtly change the way the smaller asteroid orbits the bigger one. Scientists on Earth will measure the change using telescopes on the planet and in space, including the Webb Telescope and Hubble. Uh, and they're doing this because uh, most likely there's an asteroid headed toward Earth. Dimorphos does not pose any actual threat to Earth, but scientists will obtain important data from the mission. They will compare data to many computer-generated simula simulations that have already run to see whether the kinetic method can be effective as a mitigation strategy in the event of an actual threat from an asteroid. The DART spacecraft, spacecraft has only one instrument on board, Draco, or, are the, or the Didymos, Didymos reconnaissance, an asteroid camera for optical navigation. It is a high-resolution camera that will capture images of uh, Didymos and Dimorphos while simultaneously supporting DART's autonomous guidance system. Is that it? Okay. That's it. So yeah, they got stream here. I'll have this in the on the recap video on the YouTube side. And you can check the stream out today. I probably will jump in. Also, sounds like a cool thing. Chill with your family. Watch Space Rocks. So this next article here of BBC lets me ring ring through the whole article. This is about Mariko. Japan's push into deeper tech innovation. Imagine if you could put an ultra-thin transparent solar sheet on your window to generate energy, not just from the sunlight, but also artificial lights from inside your room. Seen as the most promising next-generation solar cell, this technology called Pero Viscite is exactly what Japanese startup of startup Enco Technologies is trying to develop. When ready, the Kyoto-based firm hopes to it will per, uh, product its pro sorry hopes its product will produce as much power as a regular solar panel in the same amount. What's interesting about this is like, it's like cyclical energy that's gonna produce more electricity from your already running electricity that's being produced from the sun. So it's like cyclical to recycle your energy from the energy that's already being used. That's very interesting. We're hoping to market them in three to four years as the co-founder and chief executive of the company, Neoya Kato, but in but to use them outdoors, we need to make them durable for any kind of weather conditions, so that will take longer. So they want to put solar panels to produce. Uh, they want it. They want its solar panels to produce as much energy as standard ones. So start the startups such as this are called deep tech. They are small firms who are merging high tech engineering innovation with scientific discovery. They hope is the hope is that it will lead to the development of transformational products. But successful. But a successful product launch. In this sector takes time as a result private venture capitalist funds that lend money to entrepreneurs may be more cautious to invest in them that is what kyoto university plays as a uh, plays that is where kyoto university plays a crucial role it may be best known for producing more Nobel prize winners than any other university in asia 11 in total but it also finances new startups uh, by students and researchers through its own two venture capital funds Enco Technologies is one of the beneficiaries and has received a total of 50 million yen, 3.6 million dollars, or 3 million euro. The money came from 300 million dollar fund that, that the university received from the Japanese government back in 2015 to encourage entrepreneurship. 
The Kyoto University is strong in very, in very hard science fields like regenerative medicine, stem cell science, and clean tech energy, says Koji Morota, who heads the University Office of Society Acad- Acad- Academia Collaboration for Innovation. But in order to commercialize these deep tech companies, it requires a long time and a large amount of money. Dr. Morota adds that while a typical venture capital fund's investment period may be 8 to 10 years, that is not long enough for deep tech, so the university scheme offers up to 20 years of support. Since Kyoto University starts, started its innovation department and investment fund seven years ago, the number of startups created by its students have more than doubled to 242. That, second, that is second to only to Tokyo University, which also receives similar funding from the government, but, Kyoto's universe, uh, but Kyoto University's growth rate is much higher. But even before the university started offering support for to entrepreneurs, the city of Kyoto was known for producing startups. These include Nintendo, and maybe a computer game tech giant today. But when it launched back in 19, uh, 1889, it made playing what? But when it launched back way back in 1889, it made playing cards. Nintendo, 1889. Uh, I should not saying 1989. <laughs> Another successful firm set up in Kyoto is tech giant Kyocera, which was fund, founded in 1959 by the late Kazuo Inamori, one of Japan's best-known business leaders. A more recent business uh, success story in the city is microchip manufacturer and fellow deep tech startup Flo, uh, Flosphia. Also backed by the university, it makes semiconductors that specialize in using energy more efficiently, thereby extending the lifespan of the products such as electric cars. Kyoto's unique is being small uh, <clears throat> is being small and yet diverse says Kyoto University graduate and the boss of Flosif Flos, Flosfia Toshima Hitora the university is at the heart of it and with so many researchers in a small community anyone can access the information you need to start a business but all the Kyoto based companies founders also say that unlike firms in Kyo- uh, Tokyo they don't have enough customers here in Kyoto so they heart so they think they had to think uh, globally from the beginning. So it's going on to like another thing outside of what I was really talking about. Um, I want to stick to the. Yeah, it's kind of starting like to sound like a pitch to why to go to the Kyoto University because you can start a business. But I just want to focus on the deep tech part um, about what they're rolling out. Right. So. Yeah, one's got semiconductors, the other one's got solar. Um, there's probably a lot of stuff going out there. So definitely research Kyoto University and what they're pushing out in deep tech. Semiconductors are needed globally, so some governments may try to intervene to ensure their supply from their home markets, but it takes a long time to produce semiconductors, Mister says Mr. Yutora. That's from this uh, person still talking about their company thing. To mass produce them, we need a lot of stakeholders and a lot of businesses in many countries. That is why I believe our alliances with other companies are important, as Japan plays catch up in the semiconductor sector kyoto university's ability to patiently play the long game with with firms such as Flosphia, increase the hope that the country will be successful all right so that's the closing point right there and it makes sense this next article we have here is from financial times right yeah i got one from yahoo to close out the stream for the day It's from Financial Times. Uh, It wants me to... All right. Well, I had the article up there. But now not so much. Let's go on to the next one. It actually wasn't really too, too important, that article there. It's going to be some subset news in the finance sector. On to the Yahoo Finance news to close out this stream for the day for the talks, uh, uh, for the stock and finance markets. How do, uh, make sure this is, but this is, uh, yeah, again, from Yahoo Finance writer, Andy Serware and Dylan Kroll, Kroll, how to survive the worst bear market. Pause this. How to survive the worst bear market of all time. In Tom Wolfe's famous essay about, about the 1970s, the me decade, he wrote about how Americans had abandoned communal thinking in favor of personal wealth. They took their money and ran, he wrote. In fact, that wasn't there wasn't much money to take. Today, with the stock market in meltdown mode, it's natural to look back at other times of financial woe, the Great Recession of 2008 to 2009, the bursting tech bubble in 2000, the crash of 1987, never mind 1929. 
and all manner of mini downturns and flash crashes in between. The one that gives me the most dread in is the long, soul-sucking slog between 1966 and 1982. In other words, the 1970s. The stock market went up and down and up and down, but in the end, it absolutely for 16 years. Yeah. Bounce, 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 bounce. You know? So, I mean, you just got to grab down on these dips. You got to grab on the dips and hold on for dear life for next upswing. Forget about lava lamps, platform shoes, and Farah Fawcett. To me, this is what defined the air what was it like back then we can can't what can we learn from this time and are we set up for a repeat performance before we get to that let's examine the 1970s stock market the most devastating take comes from looking at dow jones industrial average in january 1966 the dow hit 983 a level it would not exceed until october 1982 when dow jones closed at 991 and the S&P S 500 was almost as bad after peaking in November of 1968 at 108. The S&P stalled, then touched 116 in January of 1973, stalled again, and finally broke out in May 1982. Why did the markets go sideways for 16 years? Mostly it was soaring inflation and interest rates. Monthly CPI climbed from 0.9% in January 1966 to 13.6% in June 1980. Meanwhile, gas prices went up 30, uh, from 30 cents to a, a gallon to $1. This, uh, to fight this inflation, the Federal Reserve raised the federal fund rate from 46 in 1966 all the way to 20% in 1981. That was bad for the market because higher interest rates make future company earnings and ergo stocks less valuable, which in part explains the market's swoon year to date this is uh what's this some picture of american economist and under secretary and treasury of the secretary of treasury for national affairs paul walker left in politician and u.s secretary of treasury george p schultz talking the annual international monetary fund imf meeting in 1972 according to veteran market analyst Tam, uh, sam stovall Fears on repeating the errors made in, 19, in the 70s are influencing the Federal Reserve's actions today. The Fed has told us it had planned on not making the same mistakes of the 1970s where they raised rates but then eased off out of fear of creating a deep recession only to have, raised, have to raise the rates again, Stovall said. What the Fed is trying to avoid is to create a decade of economic choppiness. They want to be aggressive with the Fed funds right now and corral inflation so that we have either a v-shape or at least a u-shape recovery rather than one that looks like a big w to quote from it's a mad 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 world stovall who began working on wall street in the late 1970s was schooled by his father the late robert stovall also a high profile investor and pundit the wall street journal did a fun piece about the two of them and their distinctive investing styles jeff yastin who publishes uh goodbyereport.com points to some other unfavorable trends for stocks in the 1970s, noting that many of the biggest U.S. stocks were conglomerates, companies that owned lots of unrelated businesses without a real plan for growth. Yastin also reminds us that Japan was an uh, ascendant back then, often at the expense of the U.S. and that technology, chips, PCs, and networking had yet to make a real impact. All this would change in the 1980s. Thanks, Nintendo. Another factor, you went from car making cards to making games. <laughs> Pushing the chip error. Another factor was that the stock market was richly valued heading into the 1970s. Back then, a group of go-go stocks dubbed the 50, the Nifty 50 led the market. The group included um, the likes of Polaroid, Eastman Kodak, and Xerox, made, uh, of which sold for more than 50 times earnings because everyone's got to take Polaroid pictures at that time and VCRs. When the market crashed in the 1970s, the Nifty 50 was hit hard with some stocks never recovering. I can't help but think of the potential parallels with the fang or the matana otherwise known as uh, tech stocks of today it really does i've heard of the uh the, fa the fang the f-a-a-n-g it really does seem we've come full circle or so suggests legendary investor stan drucken miller Dr drucken miller in a recent conversation with palantir ceo alex carp First of all, full disclosure, I've had a bearish bias for 45 years that I've had to work around. Drucken Miller says, I like darkness. When I look back at the bull market we've had a we've had in financial assets, it really started in 1982 and all the factors that cre uh, that created that not only have stopped, they've, re uh, they've reversed. So there's a high probability in mind that the market is best 
at best is going to be a kind of uh, be kind of flat for 10 years, sort of like this uh, 1966 to 1982 time period. Yikes! So what can what? Uh, so what's an investor to do? Again, right now is like that chart I was showing you up above, or is it? Let's go back up there. Was it on here? Right here. Um, we're literally like kind of like here. <laughs> Not financial advice. Do your own research. But seriously, uh, in all seriousness, where my mouse arrow is, we're literally like dipping down here. Um, so hold on for dear life, right? And uh, don't forget to take your profits off the table because if you don't, someone else is taking the profits off the table um, ahead of you. And then you're going to just be like, well, I just didn't do anything up here. And then I'm, we're all back down here. And I, I, I didn't move. What's worse is if you're up here and then we're down lower than what we were here and you start selling there because you're like, oh man, I should sell here. Buy high and sell low. That'll get us all there. All right, but not really. All right, let's go back. Let's go back. Yikes. So what's an investor to do? Let's check with someone who was stepped who was steeped in the market back then. Well, first of all, I entered the business as a security analyst in 1965. Recalls Brian, uh, Byron Ween, vice chairman of Blackstone's Private Wealth Solutions Group. I remember it was a period when, where it was tough to make money unless you're real, a really good stock picker, but I remember making money. I remember building my net worth and buying some biotech stocks that did well, and I hold some of them to this day. Uh, now let's go back and take a closer look at what happened 50 years ago. For one thing, it's important to note the dividend yield of the S&P 500 averaged 4.1% from 1966 to 1982. So investors in the broader market were at least getting some income. Getting a read on the Dow's yield back then proved difficult, but in other periods it has averaged less than 2%. So while the 1970s was a terrible time for investors, dividends mitigated some of the misery by allowing the more diversified S&P 500 to outperform the Dow 30, something to think about going forward. Unfortunately, the dividend yield the S&P 500 is now about 1.6%. First, because stock prices are high, and second, because more companies are doing stock buybacks in lieu of dividends. However, I would expect the yield to climb as companies increase payouts to attract investors. Um, not to uh, to do or go too much outside of this, but um, right now, there's going to be millionaires made off of trading NFTs because they are still trading NFTs and they're compounding ETH profits like every day on new NFTs and new artwork. And um, that's going to be, and there's tools that developers are rolling out and building for trading NFTs, like uh, basically like trading a stock. It's very interesting how people are compounding this ETH from flipping, uh, flipping NFTs and artworks. The Dow was also looking a bit uh, hoary back then, as it included the likes of Anaconda Copper replaced by 3M in 1976, Chrysler and Esmark replaced by IBM and Merck in 1979, and John's Manville, replaced by American Express in 1982. Of course, some stocks like Galteria, Exxon, and packaged goods companies did well back in the 1970s, where demand for the products and services remained fairly consistent, Stovall says. You still have to eat, smoke, drink, go to the doctor, heat your home, etc. For some companies, the 1970s was their heyday. The nice thing is there were companies that did very, very well in the environment back then. Druckenmiller says that's when Apple Computer was founded in 1976. Home Depot was founded in 1978. Coal Energy and Energy Companies... Um, what this part here looks, I don't understand. Coal, okay, that's when Apple Computer was found in 1976, Home Depot was found in 1978, coal and energy companies, chemicals, coal and energy companies, chemicals made a lot of money in the 70s. All right, I get it now. Not the strongest sentence, but fine. Cyclical areas like consumer discretionary and financials did not do as well. Some of the takeaways for investors today are always true. Avoid both overvalued stocks and those of slow growth companies. It may also pay to own dividend yielding stocks and to diversify. I agree with the dividend yielding stocks, most definitely. And it's worth noting that if we do have some part of repeat of 1966 to 1982, stock picking becomes more uh, important perhaps versus passive investing in index funds. It wasn't all darkness back in the 1970s. The disco ball balls lit up some stock. You look that much harder to find them. That's like a scenario going forward. That's likely a, uh, that's a likely scenario going forward. All right, so that's that. How to survive the bear marketplace. So definitely these articles will be in 
the recap on the YouTube side, and read through, do more research at your own due diligence and leisure. So that's all I have for today. I'll be back tomorrow with more news. So definitely jump in, say what's up. And again, if you're on the YouTube side, please do subscribe, turn on the bell notifications back uh, to blockchain tech and finance news here. I'll have this going on each and every day, 7 a.m. EDT time. We start between, uh, sorry, between 7 and 7.30 a.m. EDT time. We start straight my nose ring up and 7.30 sharp on the dot. I start reading the news. So we give time. And again, the news may start reading before 7.30 if we don't have many comments or many people chatting in there to see what's up in your take on the marketplace's news or if you have something really cool and noteworthy you'd like to see featured here on the stream and your comments featured here as well. Also give shout outs. So tell me you subscribed on the YouTube channel. Tell me you followed on the Twitter and retweeted. Tell me you followed on the Twitch side and support over there. And I'll shout out your names here on the next streams, all right? So with that, we're gonna close out this stream for the day. Here you go. Like I said, blockchain tech and finance news. Thanks for joining. Smash the subscribe button live weekdays at 7.30 a.m. EDT and Saturday at 11.30 a.m. EDT time. And if you're on the YouTube side, I'm sorry, if you're on the NFT side, you can search Kinzart and OpenSea and Foundation for my artwork I create. That's NFT based TikTok, Kintoshi GG, Instagram, Kintoshi G, and follow on Twitch, Kintoshi GG for extra content. And again, it's Kinzart on OpenSea and Foundation for NFT artworks if you want to check into that. Without further ado, have a great and safe, kind day. I'll see y'all back tomorrow. Cheers, ciao. Peace be with you. Onomashigasu.